Hello, in this video we'll be going over some special relativity problems. So this, this video is purely just a problems video and we'll be going over questions that involve this following formula that we established in a previous video. That T, oh that's a thick pen, jeez, alright, I'm going to make that a bit smaller. Don't need that big. So T is equal to TO over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So this is the formula for basic time dilation. So in the previous video, we worked out that if the speed of light is constant in all frames of reference, then time cannot be absolute. Okay? Uh, if you want to check out the previous video, there will be a link in the description probably. Yeah. So what does all these mean, these terms mean? So to start off, to make this easier, I just want you to know that T will always be greater than TO, okay? So, TO is, let's say we have um, just a, a rocket moving at some velocity, and we have old mate here, who's on the rocket, and he's moving relative with the rocket, so he's moving at the same velocity as the rocket. And we have old mate over here, who's stationary, and they would have, they would measure like the time it took for the rocket to go from one place to another. Um, old mate on the rocket would measure TO, so he would measure um, proper time, and old mate over here will measure um, relativistic time, just T. So old mate here will see a longer time than to this man over here. Okay? So always just know that T is always greater than TO. And you'll be able to solve these problems. Alright. Uh, if you want the full description of what they mean. Go check out my video in the description. Uh, I think I do a pretty good job explaining the stuff. Alright. Let's get into an actual question shall we. So here's question one. Uh, train. Trains are always very popular in um, special relativity. Alright. So. Oh. Uh, I'll just write out this formula up here. T equals T O of the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So T is the time of a stationary, I'll just put that, stationary observer. And T is the time of a moving observer. Right. Uh, v is the velocity, and C is the speed of light. And um, speed of light is constant, so speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright, so that's what each of the terms in this formula means. Alright, let's, now let's get to the question, sorry. Alright, a train traveller sneezes as his train passes through a station. So I'm going to try and draw a train if I can. And it's like going this way. It's got a velocity. Yep, it's going through. It passes through a train station. So this is like a train station here. And assuming there's like a platform. There's a fella here. The So a train traveller sneezes as his train passes through a train station. So we have a person on here and he's sneezing. It takes him one second measured by another person sitting next to him. So, there's a person next to him on the train that measures the time it takes for him to sneeze is one second. Right? If the train is travelling at half the speed of light, so we've got our velocity, and we have um, uh, one of the times up here, how long does it take the sneeze as seen by a person standing on the platform of the station? So, I'll just read this whole question again. Uh, train traveller sneezes as his train passes through a train station. The sneeze takes precisely one second as measured by another person seat, seating next to him, sitting next to the sneezer. If the train was travelling at half the speed of light, how long does it take seen by a person standing on the platform of the station? So we're asking, we're asking how much time it takes for this person to see the sneeze. Alright, so if you want to have a go at the problem without any help, uh, feel free to pause the video and have a go. Alright, so we're going to break apart um, all the information we've got in here. 
So the sneeze takes approximately one second, as seen by a person standing, a uh, person sitting next to him. So we know that um, the time of these people in here, since they're moving, they're going to measure TO. So our TO in this question is one second. Okay. And in here they have they haven't like given you a number. They've just said half the speed of light. So our velocity is 0.50 c, and c is the speed of light. Alright, so we have to, we want to find t, okay? So we've got our velocity and we've got our to. So let's just write out our formula. t equals to over the square root of, over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Alright, and we'll just write this up here. So t is greater than to. Alright, so logically that makes sense, and this makes sense, and we've got given everything we need. So all we've got to do is plug into our formula. So we've got to go, t is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus our velocity, which is 0.5c, or squared, all over c squared. Okay, uh, c is 3.0 times 10 to the 10 meters per second. So when you plug that into your calculator, just make sure you replace C for this number here. Alright, plugging that into our calculator, um, T is approximately 1.15 seconds. Okay, does that match with our inequality? 1.15 is greater than 1. So, yep. Alright, and that's how you solve the question. So, old mate over here will see the sneeze it will take place in 1.15 seconds, while these people in here will see it in one second, okay? And that velocity is 0.5c. Alright, I hope that made sense to you. If you have any questions, leave something in the comments. So, all you got to do to work out these problems is work out which t have you been given, okay? So TO is basically the one, TO is with when you're moving with it. So these people are moving with the vehicle. So they have TO, they're moving with it. T is the stationary object, relative, okay? He's not moving, this fellow here is not moving, so it's going to be T, alright? So that, you just got to work out what T you've been given, and then you can work out the other, because all you got to do is plug in the velocity, and yeah. Alright, cool, I hope. That made sense. Let's go on to the next question. Alright, this one. Alright, special relativity. Uh, it applies to all objects. Um, it's time dilations are very seen with um, fast moving things. Um, things that move really fast or close to the speed of light are subatomic particles. So you might get application questions like this, where they talk about some elementary particle moving at such and such, and you're just like, what the heck are they even talking about? Don't worry, it's the same situation as the trains. All they're doing is they're just changing the scenario. It's the, still the same ideas. You've got to find what T you have and what velocity you've been given. Okay? So I'll read you the, the question. Determine the rest lifetime of an elementary particle traveling at a speed of 2.85 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. If its average lifetime at this speed is measured to be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. Okay, so if you want to have a go at the problem, feel free to pause the video. Alright, first off, what I'm going to write out our formula T equals TO over the square. Oh, sorry, my computer's lagging. Let me just try that again. T equals TO. Oh, square root over 1 minus V squared over C squared. Alright, the rest lifetime. If you get given rest lifetime or rest anything, that is TO. Okay? If you're given rest, it is T. And you know how I can work that out? So just look at this second sentence here. If the average, sorry, I just crossed half that. If the average lifetime of this speed is measured to be that. Okay, so you have a particle here and it's moving at such and such. What they did is they measured the time it took, okay? So when they say the average lifetime is measured to be that, they're talking about the time it took someone to measure this um, particle moving. 
they don't know what this time here, the frame of reference of the particle. They only know what this time is here, which is the person that's actually measuring the time it takes for the particle from his perspective, okay? His perspective. So, that second sentence here, I want you to imagine this drawing. So, if it says, the average lifetime at this speed is measured to be that time. So, what I picture is some fella measuring this particle to have a time, um, its average lifetime to be 2.5 times 10 to the um, negative 8 seconds. That's what I'm imagining. So, that's what he's saying. That's when they say the average lifetime is measured. Some fella's measuring it. Because we can't actually go into um, the particle's frame reference because it's travelling too fast. Okay. So that's what I got out of the second sentence. Let's go back to the first sentence. Alright, so that's how I know we want TO. Alright, straight up. And we've been given a velocity. So T is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. And V is 2.85 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, when they give these questions in exams, a lot of students will mix up these numbers. I don't know why. Um, they kind of look similar. But you just got to look at the units they have on the end here and what they're actually talking about. So this thing is talking about speed and it gives you a velocity. This here is talking about a time and gives you a time. The numbers, if, if you squint your eyes, they've got the same... Um, index except one's a negative index to the power they look kind of similar if um you weren't really paying attention but just got to read the question and take it slowly if you if you rush um time dilation questions or any special relativity questions you'll probably get it wrong so you just got to take your time and see what you've been given and see what you got to find all right so now it's just pretty much mathematics so this formula we want to find to okay so we want the rest lifetime of the particle so all we got to do is um i'll just write the equation again v squared c squared equals t all we got to do is move all of this up there okay this is a fraction so all i gotta do is multiply both sides um pretty much by it so I'll multiply this side as well Sorry, this is a bit messy. And then we get TO is equal to T times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Boom, that's our rearranged formula. Now we've got to plug in our numbers. I'm just going to rub this out and move this up. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what's going on. I keep selecting the wrong thing. All right. All right. So T is 2.5. So TO equals 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8 multiplied by the square root of 1 minus the velocity is 2.85 times 10 to the 8 all squared over the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second all squared. Put that in your calculator. And you should get 7.80 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds. It's okay if you don't exactly get this number as long as you're in that ballpark. Because they'll give you a range. Because depending where students round their numbers and stuff. Alright. Um, so, don't be surprised if they give you some particle question with special relativity. Because that's mostly where special relativity takes place. Of course, it applies to all things of motion, but it's explicitly, like, it's more noticeable with objects traveling f pretty close to the speed of light. And things that do that are like electrons, pions, all sorts of subatomic particles that you'll probably learn in the standard model. Alright, let's go on to the third question. A very fast train traveling at 0.8c passes through a very long railroad station. A woman on board the train measures the time interval to go from one end of the station to the other as one second. Calculate the length of time a man on the platform would measure the interval. Alright, so this is pretty similar to the first question. Uh, if you want to have a go, feel free to pause the video and have a go. Right, first off, write a formula. So T equals TO over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Alright. 
first sentence, our velocity is 0 0.8, oh, whoops, sorry, <laughs> my pen was glitching for a second, 0 0.8 C, alright, a woman on board, so let's draw what we're actually looking at, we have a woman on board the train, alright, and she measures to go from one end to the other, she measures one second, okay, oh, whoops, I can't, right second that small and we know that she's moving with it so her time is to okay so there's a man on the platform they're talking about we have old mate over here the length of time so not a length just a time and we want to find t okay so that's the hardest part of visualizing what's going on and placing the t's all right so we don't need to rearrange our formula so we know that to equals one and our velocity is 0 0.8 or C. Okay? So I'm just going to move that up. Oh, why is it doing that? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, I can just, yeah. All right, so T, so T equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus um, 0 0.8 or C over C squared and that's squared and so just remember C equals 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second uh, leave the units off when you're calculating and put the units on afterwards so using our calculator you'll get a time of approximately 1.66 seconds okay uh, those are the questions I have for this video. Um, if you're confused about something, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm probably going to post some more videos on this particular topic um, before I go into the length contraction, which is the other part of special relativity and um, relativistic momentum. But if you want some more time dilation questions specifically, um, I could probably leave, well, just shout something in the comments. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.